Australia's most deceitful car company, on objective criteria, Toyota, is already starting to hose down customer complaints about allegedly excessive engine oil consumption in that lardy assed planet-killing waste of resources, which you probably know better as the Land Cruiser 300. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap. Australia only website card. According to this, Australian champion misleading deceivers, the new V6 diesel in the 300 with its hot V design abomination is likely to drink more than 1.7 litres of engine oil in between standard services. This is according to a video posted by Nana Wadding Toyota on YouTube, which details a quote-unquote protected customer information bulletin, presumably sent from head office to Nana Wadding Toyota. Now, I suspect that document is going to be taken down directly, which is why, fortuitously enough, I have already downloaded and secured a copy for safekeeping, you know just in case. We'll drill down into exactly what that document says and what it means if you own one or you're on the cusp of slapping down the big bucks on the counter and jumping in the queue. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Living online is obviously awesome, but it's also kind of risky. You've really got to make sure you don't leave the door open to cyber attacks, data breaches and hackers. And that means you need to put some countermeasures in place now. Using NordVPN is a simple three-step process. You just choose a subscription, you download the app, and you connect to a NordVPN server. One click, and you are protected. NordVPN shields your IP address from scammers, and it secures your online traffic with state-of-the-art encryption across as many as six devices. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now, and you'll get up to four additional months Months free, plus you'll get Nord's rock solid 30 day money back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the planet, and it only costs about as much as a cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity, and your devices secure. You'll be browsing online, shopping, listening to your favorite podcasts, and streaming video in complete privacy. And that includes plugging the holes in dodgy public Wi-Fi if you are connected remotely while traveling. All up, that's a pretty small price to pay for enhanced cybersecurity. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now to get much safer online and enjoy those extra months of free NordVPN subscription time. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. And thank you to Nord for sponsoring this episode. It really doesn't get any more obvious than this, but Toyota is the most deceitful, misleading car maker down under following its recent conviction in federal court for misleading or deceptive conduct, 264,170 times. Over the 2.8 litre diesel shithouse DPF integration problem that afflicted Hilux Fortuna and Softcock Land Cruiser, which you probably also know as Prado. And they were sold between 2015 and 2020. So it's kind of hard for me to see that, the whole thing conduct-wise, being just accidental. <laughs> Call me a cynic. Personal opinion. Land Cruiser 300 has a hot V, and if you are a little hazy on the design of engines, V configuration engines, with a bank of cylinders up here and a bank of cylinders over there, do -do 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 -do, like that, usually have the inlet on the top and the flow is across the head towards the outsides where the exhaust just farts itself out down the side of the cars. And this is really good for heat management, but not so hot on the inlet side because it involves a whole lot of convoluted plumbing. 
if you reverse the flow, so if you put the inlets on the outside, as in the design abomination of the Land Cruiser, that's good for plumbing, but it's kind of shit for thermal management because where does the heat go? It's all up here at the top of the engine and getting it to flow out the ass of the car is something of a challenge. And I'd have to say that hot Vs, for every manufacturer who's ever gotten one out of the blocks, they tend to be a basket case of unreliability because waste heat invariably does not escape and it keeps frying shit and it gets worse and worse the older the engine gets. But apparently this Mimo did not get to the shot callers at Toyota before they decided this was a good idea. And I'm not alleging this problem has anything to do with thermal management. I'm just saying that, hey, maybe we've got that to look forward to. So, Nana Wadding Toyota's video is up here. I'll put a card to it just up there. Not that I'd like to promote them. It's just that I hope this is a severe disincentive to head office to call for that video to be taken down because I really want you to see firsthand what that dealership says when they read out this official document from Toyota because that's where I'm getting this information. And like I said, I've got a copy just in case. Just in case this gets nasty. I really hope it doesn't because, you know, free speech is so important. Now, this thing is called customer information, even though it's protected, whatever that means. Customer information, Land Cruiser engine oil. And it begins with this perfunctory sort of introductory corporate masturbation, orbiting just what a design triumph. <laughs> this engine really is how shit hot it is which is clearly why it burns so much freaking oil in between services, at least in many cases. And I say in many cases because why the F else would they have gone to the trouble of penning this bulletin if it wasn't to hose down a bust, a bust and a bunch of customers attending dealerships bitching about just how much oil their fine design abomination burns. Oh, bin cam, eh, maybe. Quote, this is a direct quote from the document because Nana Wadding Toyota just basically posted the document in his video and some dude from there reads it out. The quote says, the F33A-FTV engine, design abomination, is fitted with a low engine oil level caution notification that may display on the multifunction information display, the little thing in between the tagger and the speedo, during the first 12 month 20,000 kilometre or between services under some operating conditions, end quote. And I gotta say, You'd think a company with the resources of Toyota could just employ someone with basic literacy skills so that they don't look like rank amateurs when they post various documents out for their customers via their dealers. I mean, this thing really is, if a kid in year 10 turned that in as part of their assignment, you'd be saying, hey, kid, just come here. Look, dude, do it like this. How hard is it? The translation of what they said is, I'd suggest, we backed off the clearances and everything that matters, like the rings and the bearings and things of that nature, just so that we could meet the various emissions regulation standards around the world, and that's why this engine drinks like a sailor on shore leave with your sister. And it goes on and says, quote, why do engines use oil? Question mark would have been nice, just saying. Quote, all engines are designed to use oil, blah, blah, blah. I'd say that's a piece of corporate bullshit right there because some oil consumption is inevitable because oil remains on the surface of the bores as the pistons slide up and down. Some vestigial oil remains there and inevitably some of that gets burned right? It, like, it just does. And there's some oil mist in the crankcase that inevitably gets back into the engine via the PCV system. That's inevitable as well. But the management of oil consumption by manufacturers 
really varies a great deal across the industry and most engines use an imperceptible amount of engine oil whereas this shitter is likely to drink 1.7 and it doesn't matter how many customer information bulletins you issue this is a R&D disaster. Engines are not meant to drink oil like that. That's just off the table. Personal opinion, speaking as an engineer. Because that shit can be managed. Like, come on. Uh, quote, engine oil consumption will vary greatly depending on the vehicle's usage and operating conditions. Hard to argue with that, I suppose. I guess it will. Quote, normal usage slash severe operation oil usage. <laughs> Do you lot at Toyota have any idea how to punctuate. I mean, come on, at all. Typically, this is a quote as well, if the vehicle is used in conditions that result in higher fuel consumption, more engine oil consumption will be expected. So this is just warming you up for dropping your trousers and copping it. Your engine drinks a lot of oil, just live with it. Rebound shot. Begs an obvious question. Like, exactly what conditions are going to cause this excessive consumption? Which is why, I suppose, they've included the following. Quote, the following situations are examples where oil consumption may increase. Number one, when the engine is new. Okay, so that's hosing you down up front. Sustained high-speed operation. The highest speed you can drive at outside the Northern Territory is like 110. So, sustained 110. Frequent hard acceleration or deceleration, lead foot driving. High engine load operation, such as towing or high payload. That would be a, a means of hosing down all Piss Creekians, I'd suggest. If you are a dingo Piss Creekian, towing your three and a half ton aluminium acoustically transparent chitois here and there, with your effluent on tour, then that's you, dude. When leaving the engine idling for a long period of time. Driving frequently through heavy traffic or excessive stop-start driving. So as far as I can see, when I think about all of that, new, high-speed, lead foot, towing and heavy loads, idling, heavy traffic and excessive stop-start, whatever an excessive stop-start means. What does excessive mean? To me, 30 seconds of stop start is excessive. I, mean, I just want to be going with the flow. Don't know about you. As far as I can see, what they've done here is list every possible mode of driving that a person can do in a Land Cruiser, city, highway towing, heavily laden, not lead foot and stuck in freaking traffic. What the fuck else kind of driving is there? So this is meant, as far as I can tell, to weasel out of every conceivable customer complaint about oil consumption like, dude, it's not our vehicle, it's on you and how you drive. How fucking convenient. <laughs> Another rebound. This is also, disgracefully enough, it's turning this problem into a money-making opportunity for dealers because what they're actually doing is just saying, well, come in and bring it in for another service. Just bring it in for an intermediate service. Instead of 12 months and 20,000, let's do it every three months and 5,000. Problem solved. ka -ching. Really. This problem is, you know, it's not disclosed at the point of purchase or at any time that I can tell in the lead up to actually buying this vehicle. Like, they don't go, dude, just letting you know, she might drink two to three litres of Mobile One in between services. Like, but that, that's not going to be a problem. You're cool with that, right? Just sign here and that'll be five grand deposit, dude. I'd love to see a dealer actually say that. I mean, if you're a salesman and you said that, I suspect you'd be marched or forthwith. The, and the reason I'm putting it this way, like the 1.7 litre thing, that's a reason, okay? Because that 3.3 litre abomination has a 6.6 .6 litre sump and the low oil warning indicator on the multifunction display is calibrated to activate 
at 4.9 litres of remaining sump oil. Okay, 6.6 .6 minus 4.9, 1.7. That's a shitload of engine oil going out the exhaust pipe. At least it is to me. And they say this can happen any time, right? Inside the 12-month, 20,000K service interval. So it's got to be more than. You've got to be reasonably expecting more than 1.7 litres of engine oil consumption inside every service interval. And the fix which they propose in that document is like, just bring it in for a service at four times the frequency that we told you at the point of purchase, right? So the conclusion that I draw from all of this is if you drive in the city or the country or heavily laden or not, or you tow or you don't, or you're in traffic or you're in the open road, or you drive aggressively or and gently, your shitbox hot V Land Cruiser 300 that you paid north of 100 grand for most probably is likely to drink more than 1.7 litres of oil, okay? So let's just call it two for the sake of shits and giggles, right? That's about 30% of the engine oil sump capacity literally disappearing out the exhaust pipe but via the top of the engine, so all good. And hey, dude, it's, it's not a design defect, right? We're just calling it normal, and therefore it's an operational characteristic, even though we did not disclose this to you at any point in the lead-up to your procurement of the vehicle, but you can trust us because of our unbelievable track record with integrity. Fuck, man. We live in fictional times. If I wrote this as the script for an automotive satirical whatever, the freaking studio would call me and say, stop smoking crack during the writer's briefings. They just would. Like, it's not like they're assholes or anything. Why else would they con confer protected status on a document seemingly targeted at customers but marked protected? And I would therefore respectfully argue that the non-disclosure of things of this nature, the oil drinking problem up front, whether they frickin' knew or not, is a breach of Australian consumer law because it really might affect you and whether a reasonable version of you would decide to purchase that vehicle or not. Do you really want to be obliged to bring it back every three months for a service just because they didn't tell you how heavily it was going to drink oil? That's unacceptable. It's off the freaking table. And they've got form, dude, in the domain of <laughs> defect non-disclosure. <coughs> think you'd agree. Actually, I don't care if you agree or not. The federal court found that they have form in the area of defect non-disclosure. I get that Toyota is a religion. Okay, I really do. If you're a dingo piss creakian, I get that Toyota is your god and what I'm saying is therefore heresy. But, dude, this just reeks to me of same shit, different defect. So you mark my words. That 3.3 litre hot V abomination, like, it's going to give me endless content in the years ahead. You mark my words on that. Like, I'm feeling like I can take that to the bank. So, yay, Toyota. Oh, what a feeling.